Okay, so we are going to start with the ECG series uh, of revising around 150 ECG cases uh, with a very famous classic book and uh, uh, by John and uh, Joanna Hampton and David Adler. So we'll start with the first case. Now this one is the old e edition, the latest edition. Uh, is the fifth one. This is, I think, the third edition. So here you have an ECG which was recorded from a 25-year-old pregnant woman and um, who complained of an irregular heartbeat. Now an auscultation revealed soft systolic murmur, but the heart was otherwise normal. What does the ECG show and what would you do? Now, if you examine this ECG, it shows a sinus rhythm since each of the beats is being started by the SNA. And the rate is around 100 beats per minute. We can also observe some ventricular extra systoles in it. Okay? Apart from this, the axis is normal. Uh, the QRS complex are normal uh, as uh, are the T waves. Um, now, the extra systoles in these ECG are fairly frequent, but the ECG is otherwise normal. Now, ventricular excess stones are very common in uh, young females. Large groups of people, there is a correlation between the presence of extra systole and heart disease of many times. However, in young people who are otherwise asymptomatic and those, ha and those whose hearts are otherwise normal, the chance of significant cardiac problems are very low. So, occasional extra systoles in this context do not require any investigation. With more frequent extra systoles, an echocardiogram uh, to confirm a structural normal heart provides additional resources, and specific treatment is not usually required beyond avoidance of alcohol and caffeine. So, this is a classical ECG of sinus rhythm with ventricular extra systoles. Now the next ECG is of a 60 year old man uh, who was seen as an outpatient complaining of rather vague central chest pain on exertion. He had never had pain at rest. What does this ECG show and what would you do next? You can pause to observe and then uh, see the answer. So this ECG again shows a sinus rhythm and the rate is around 77 beats per minute, which is normal. Uh, the PR interval is normal in all the leads. Uh, the axis is normal. There are, however, prominent deep Q waves in lead 2, 3 and ABF, which indicates a inferior infarction. So there are small Q waves in V5 yeah, in V6, but these can be separate. Now, the ST segment is fairly normal and all, with no elevation in the leads, which are showing Q waves. Um, there are inverted T waves in 2, 3, um, and ABF. Now, the clinical interpretation of this is that the Q waves in, are there in the inferior leads together with the in, inverted T waves which point towards an old inferior myocardial infarction. So what do we do in this, this case? This patient seems to have had a myocardial infarction at some point in the past, and by implication, his vague chest pain may be due to angina. Now his coronary disease requires investigation. If he remains symptomatic on treatment, consider coronary angiography. But if he is asymptomatic, the stress MRI will allow assessment of left ventricular function and the infarct size as well. Uh, determining the extent of ischemia will also not be a problem with a stress MRI. Now he will require aspirin and medical treatment to optimize the risk factor. We will have to treat the angina and we have to address the left ventricular impairment if it is confirmed. So this is an ECG of an old infarct inferior MRI. Okay. Now this is an ECG of an 80 year old woman who had previously had a few attacks of dizziness, fell and broke her hip. Now she was found to have a slow pulse and this is her ECG. The surgeons want to operate as soon as possible but the anesthetist is unhappy. 
Now, what does the SCG show and what should be done? So, this ECG shows the P wave rate, the P wave rate being around 130 beats per minute. Okay. And uh, the, there is complete hard block in this because there is no association between the P waves and the QRS. If you check the beats, uh, uh, ventricular uh, QRS complex state, then it is 23 beats per minute. So the ventricular escape rhythm has wide QRS complexes and there are abnormal T waves. Okay. So no further interpretation of this ECG is possible. This is complete hard block. Okay. So uh, what to do in this case? In the absence of history, which is suggesting MI, this woman almost certainly has a chronic hard block. And the fall may or may not be have been due to Stokes Adam attack. That is deep loss of consciousness due to this heart block. Now she needs a permanent pacemaker. Ideally, immediately. If permanent pacing is not possible immediately, we can do with a temporary pacemaker. So this is a classical ECG of a complete third heart block. We can no association between the P waves and the QRS. Any of those We come to another ECG which is of a 50 year old man who is seen in the accident and uh, emergency department with severe central chest pain which has been present for 18 hours. What does this ECG show and what would you do? Now this ECG again uh, shows sinus rhythm. Okay. And there is the rate is 64 beats per minute. The axis is normal. The two, the early two is uh, okay. Two waves are there in V2 and V4. Okay. So there are raised ST segments in lead V2 to V4. Okay. So it should be more than two and a half. V2 to V4, there are ST elevations. And there are inverted T waves in lead V, lead 1, in lead VL and V2 to V6. Yep. So you can see T waves inverted in all these. Now this is a classical ST segment elevation of the MI. Now how do we divide it, uh, ACS? We divide those without ST uh, elevation and ST segment uh, with ST segment elevation. Troponin is raised, this becomes ST elevation MI. And non ST elevation MI if it's not elevated. Majority develop a rising troponin, but this may be prevented by early intervention. Now, what to do in this case? Now, more than 18 hours have passed, we can have elapsed since the onset of pain. So, this patient is completely out of the window. Uh, conventional limit for PCI, primary percutaneous coronary intervention. Nevertheless, if he is still in pain and the pain is ischemic rather than pericardiac in nature and still looks unwell, then PCI should be considered unless there are good reasons not to do so. Now, if the patient is very unwell or hemodynamically compromised, then you have to consider bedside echocardiogram to exclude MI complications such as ventricular septal defect or papillary muscle rupture or contained rupture. Now he will require treatment and dual antiplatelet therapy with aspirin P2 Y12 inhibitor as soon as possible and secondary prevention therapies after revascularization. So this is a classical ECG of an acute anterior ST elevation myocardial infarction. We'll see the next ECG. Now, this is an ECG of a 26 year old woman who has been complaining of uh, palpitations in the past. Is admitted to the hospital via the accident and emergency department with palpitations. 
and now what does the ECG show and what you should do? So this ECG shows, of course, narrow complex tachycardia and the rate in this is about 200 beats per minute. There are no P waves visible, the axis is normal. Then the QRS complexes are regular, the QRS complexes are normal, ST segment is normal, T waves are normal. Okay. So this is a supraventricular tachycardia since there are no P waves are visible. This is probably an atrioventricular nodal re-entry tachycardia or an atrioventricular re-entry tachycardia. Now AVNRT is the most common form of paroxysmal tachycardia in young people and presumably explains the patient's previous episodes of palpitation. AVRT, AVRT which is where an aberrant pathway is not evident on resting ECG is an alternative explanation. Okay? So we don't know whether it's in stress or in resting phase. Attacks of AVNRT or AVRT may be terminated by any of the maneuvers that lead to vagal stimulations like valsalva maneuvers or you can do carotid sinus pressure or emotion of the face in the cold water. Okay. Now, if these are unsuccessful, we can give intravenous adenosine. Given in incremental doses, should be given by bolus injections. Now, adenosine has a very short half-life, but can cause flushing and occasional uh, an asthmatic attack. So, we will avoid these in asthma. asthma. Now, if adenosine proves unsuccessful, we can give the rapamil around 5 to 10 milligram bolus uh, will usually restore the sinus rhythm. Otherwise, we will have to give a direct current, a DC conversion under sedation. If the episodes are rare, then you can give prophylactic treatment. But if there are recurrent, then you need a beta blocker or verapamil may be considered. Now, if medical treatment is inadequate or not tolerated, then you need a specialist electrophysiologist referral to consider investigation. You need a cardiology maybe. with a view to ablation treatment should be considered. So this is supraventricular tachycardia, atrioventricular nodal re-entry re or atrioventricular re-entry tachycardia. Yeah, so this is it. We will be uh, doing solving 150 cases in ECG. So if you all are interested, so stick on, hang on and uh, thank you.